am here with one of my favorite render engine nerds. Like, uh, uh, you know, Chad, you were kind of like my, I don't know, my mentor in a way. Like, you're at the level where I want to be with Cinema 4D. Like, I w uh, <laughs> like, when it comes to like your knowledge base and like how much you know, like you're asking us questions on Skype and I was like, I don't know, ask Dave. Dave knows more about this, you know? I'm like, if you don't know it, then I doubt Dave knows it even, you know? But like, I, I, I don't know, like, I, I think that was just a completely random thought that I oh, had. Thank you. Anyway, I that. but uh, yeah, I, I so you you came on to Grayscale Gorilla about a year ago, right? Yeah, it was uh, about a year ago. Uh, April, geez, probably like 14th or something was my first day a year ago. But I had been so towards my end uh, uh, at DK, I was already starting to work with Nick and like doing things with Grayscale Gorilla. Uh, and then it kind of turned into like, well, let's just maybe we can make this work full time. And I was like, yeah, I mean, if we can do it, let's do it. Because I was ready for a change. I, I was ready for a lifestyle switch up. I had been commuting, you know, really working long hours. Yeah. You know how that goes. So um, when I started using cinema, I think I think it was at Half Res uh, two years ago. I came to Half Res and I found Nick and I said, Nick, I'm going to learn Cinema 4D. Mm -hmm. And he just gave me a hug. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I'm so happy right yeah. now. And then, you know, a year later, I'm working with yeah. them, you know, and like we're together and it's great. Yeah, yeah. it's the best. I, I was telling Nick yesterday that I like I feel like you were an excellent like person to bring in, like probably one of the best people that they could have brought in to really expand the Grayscale Gorilla brand because of your knowledge base and especially like with the render wars, as you guys call it, you yes, know, yes. like I that was that has been like a big thing that people have been talking about left and right yeah. and with I feel like with your knowledge base like you were able to add this whole extra dimension to Grayscale Gorilla that you know I felt like it was kind of missing and I right. think a lot of people felt like it was missing but like now it's like with you and Chris and Nick they all kind of like meld together we can I, I like to think that the three of us have different enough perspectives on the industry and just even life mm -hmm. that when we get together it just works because we all we're not all the same you know we don't all have the same opinions we don't have the same ideas and that's what makes for a good like cohesion because you want people that complement you that aren't the same as you and when it comes to like rendering and stuff like I've just always been a nerd like that like when I was using uh, 3ds max back in the day I used mental ray Brazil v-ray I tried them all back then and so I've always kind of been really interested in it and so when I came to Cinema 4D and started learning uh, what all the renders they had, really, honestly, that's what brought me to Cinema 4D. I never really took it all that seriously until I saw all these third-party renderers coming out. Like, yeah. Arnold was coming out. I saw Octane was happening, and I was really excited about Octane. So it, it's really, like, it was the catalyst that kind of pushed me over the edge into cinema, I think, just the rendering opportunities. And now, like... There's so many different rendering choices out there for people that it's it's absurd, as you know. You know, we talked about it before, and th and everybody always asks me, what should I use? Yeah. What should I use? And yeah. and the, the question can't be answered that simply. Unfortunately, you just got to ask, like, well, what what do you work on? What do you yeah. what do you do? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, what do you what do you want to make? Yeah. And then they tell me, and then I can kind of give them an idea, you know. And sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's Octane, sometimes it's Arnold, sometimes it's Redshift, and yeah. it depends on the work that you do. So yeah. it, it never, you never really know until somebody comes up and says, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. But first thing I always say is, what is physical not doing for you? And that's then, good, that's and good. And then, you know, that, that way I can get an idea. Well, I don't think it, it's not fast enough. Okay, well, maybe you should look at GPU, you know, yeah. like just get an idea of what they're after and I can help them that way. But You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I've never actually used physical renderer. Really? Like, yeah, I went from standard renderer, just the standard C4D yeah. renderer, straight into Octane. And it really? kind of, yeah, yeah, it kind of just like blew me away. I mean, Octane is, you know, it's well, fast. Yeah, I mean, dude, when you, and that, it, the IPR the train, is like, you know, crazy. Yeah, yeah you know, I've well, drank the, I, I drank the Octane juice. No, you know? I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, believe me. <laughs> uh, but I will say that like, physical is very capable. Mm -hmm. It's it's totally capable. It's not as fast as all the, you know, crazy ones that are out there. You can make it fast if you know how to use it right. Mm -hmm. But when I first started at, at GSG, 
I knew I was going to have to learn physical because all the tools work in physical, yeah. right? So I spent a good amount of time like trying to understand what it was, how it worked. And the first couple things that I made in physical, I was really happy with because they turned out good. And it's a fantastic renderer. Yeah, I will say a lot of the stuff that I've seen in physical render is actually really excellent. Yeah. It, it looks great. I, we were even watching uh, uh, Nick's like just preview presentation for you know all the people at the Maxon booth before oh, yeah, everything yeah, the, yeah, the, and I the, the, the stuff he yeah the, the stuff he was doing with like luminance and like ambient occlusion and stuff I was like oh wow physical actually has a lot to offer yeah. you know I'm kind of kicking myself because I'm not trying it you well, know? it's it's difficult once you've kind of like experienced GPU enhanced yeah. IPR or even Arnold IPR yeah. you're just kind of like oh I can't live without IPR now, yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. no matter what renderer I use. And yeah, but like he was doing, he was bringing down settings enough to where like it was almost like yeah. having an R IPR. So the funny thing about that was like he um, he watched me using Arnold, uh -huh. and he built a layout uh -huh. like mine. <laughs> he wanted to see if he could build a layout like mine uh -huh. and like try to make it feel as much. And he did, and he yeah. gave it out on our in a tutorial, I think. I think it might be on our site still, but yeah, where he uses like the progressive mode in, in physical mm -hmm. to kind of emulate what's happening yeah. in like Octane or Arnold or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's good. I mean, if you have a good enough CPU, it's pretty rad. Yeah. And if you don't have budget to buy Octane or graphics cards or Arnold, then yeah. physical, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's great. Um, okay, so let's talk some render engines more so. Sure, yeah. Um, you're on the, I, now I don't know if we can talk about this or not because but you're on the Redshift beta, yep. you know? Alpha. And alpha. Not, e not even alpha, in Yeah, yet. alpha, right. Um, but in my, I, I am as well, and I feel like it's a really sturdy alpha, yeah. you know? I and, mean, I've been in a lot of alphas that suck, yeah. like, and you're just like, oh my God, how's this ever gonna get to production? Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're doing it right. They're, so they're opening up this alpha to just about anybody that, that says, hey, look, I'm a professional. I'm not going to like be a jerk and like tweet out all the secrets and all that. They'll let you in, and then you can play with it and really see what it can do. But if you give them feedback, that's really what they're asking for. I mean, you got to... I've noticed gotta, they're very active on the forum. Yeah, you have to be because, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know, if you get in there and say, hey, listen, I really wish this worked better. I really wish that worked better. And if you get enough plus ones in the forum post of your feature request, the, the developers have to listen to you. Yeah. So just be active. If you do join the alpha, get in there, make sure you're being heard. Even if it's something that, you know, you feel like, I'm not really sure if they would even care about this. Just post it anyway. Yeah. Uh, Arnold 5 just came out. Oh man, love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, I was watching your your uh, your GSG live stream. Sorry, I was Skyping you saying, dude, please turn your thing around. Sorry. <laughs> no, dude, that was hilarious. No, I, I, I felt bad. I was like, I don't want to interrupt him, but, you no, know, I come on. I, yeah. Listen, man, those kind of mistakes are the best. Yeah. Like, when that happens, like, I just try to roll with it. I feel bad because everybody's, like, yelling at me, like, yeah. what are you doing? Switch yeah. to the other thing. And I'm like... I don't know, like, I'm sorry. But yeah, it was fun. It's, it's, so, like, we were kind of hoping, like, you know, we were kind of hoping that there might be some GPU stuff oh, with Arnold, yeah. you know? And so I was kind of disappointed, but, like, are you really happy with the way the new one came out? Yeah, I think, well, I always knew, I knew that GPU wasn't going to be a part of 5. Really? Because think about it, like, I, everything that he had been talking about, Marcos and the team, and had been slowly kind of leaking out via Twitter and stuff, was talking more about the blue noise reduction, which is basically, it's not like noise in the blue channel or anything like that. It's like a, I don't, it's over my head mathematical term about noise okay. that he figured out a way to eliminate. So yeah, I was looking at some of the yeah. sample renders. Gosh, it's it's, it's killer. Yeah. It's really killer. And so I knew that none of that stuff had been talked about in a GPU fashion. So I just kind of put two and two together and thought, okay, they're going to do five. And then they must be going to GPU, work on that, maybe focusing on that after five, but yeah. all speculative, I don't really know. But I will say that five is fantastic. They sped it up tremendously. Yeah, I've heard there are some significant oh, speed, dude, like- So much faster, so much faster. Yeah. And then the uh, the new Uber shader uh -huh. is fantastic because it's more of like a, a PBR shader, so a physically based you know kind of shader. Yeah. And it, it comes kind of preset with these like little presets. So like you can say dielectric, metal, whatever, plastic, and then you can dial in like, do you want gold? Do you want copper? Do you want, and it gets you a nice starting point for your materials, okay. glass, that sort of yeah. thing. So you're not having to like recreate, you know, things over and over and over again. Like, oh, how did I, 
how did I do this? And it has subsurface built in, so you just literally drag the subsurface up, yeah. and it's done. Yeah. I mean, all the I will say things. something like that with uh, Redshift. Redshift, the the volumetric lighting. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! Yeah. Like that blew me away. Especially coming from Octane, where it's like creating volumetrics oh, is like, oh, it's it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah, no, the uh, volumetrics both in Arnold and Redshift are phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, they work great. Yeah. It's just, a, yeah, it's not even a, de a big deal. Yeah. So, uh, Octane, have you had a chance to try out the new adaptive sampling? No, that's 3.06, right? 3.06, they, they released the 3.06, like, test four right. and it's got adaptive sampling in the path tracing and in the direct light. I'm interested to try it. I haven't had the time to download it. I'm on 3.05 right now and uh, it was acting kind of weird for me so I think I need to download the new one. And the, it. It's it's pretty solid. Uh, uh, the the So here's one thing. Uh, Dave was working on an animation and uh, we, when we were doing the dead mouse stuff, you know, and so he's in path tracing and it's like, no, he was in direct lighting yeah. at like 4,000 samples and we were getting tons and tons of noise, right? Oh so, so, we, like, yeah, so we went on to path tracing, turned on adaptive sampling at 4,000 samples. He was able to bring it down to 256 samples. And it worked? And, yeah, and it worked. Nice. Got rid of all the noise. That's great. It's crazy killer. That's good. Anyway. I want to try the triplaner. Yeah. The triplaner suit. Yeah. Have you played with that? Yet? I have not. No. So triplaner is like my favorite new thing, and like all the renders are starting to have it now. Like Arnold has it, Octane has it. I think in 3.06. You know what it is? It's like box mapping. You know, a cubic map. Right. You know, when you use like if you don't want to UV this mic, you'd be like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to UV this mic. It's gonna take me forever. I'll use a cubic map. Right. But on the edges, you get those seams yeah. because it's just a projection of a cube. Right. Well, triplanar mapping, what that does is it allows you to blend those corners together and feather your corners oh, cool. so you don't have to UV stuff as much. Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, cinema's not the best at UVing. Yeah. Not afraid to say that. But <laughs> uh, it, it's definitely helpful, you know, and uh, the ability to use triplanar in Octane and Arnold is awesome. So you don't have to, like, UV everything that you had to before. So it's cool. good. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, uh, last question. Let's go back to GSG. Okay. You know, um, you guys are releasing, plugs. yeah. You guys are plugs. releasing a lot of plugins and stuff yeah, like that. You got uh, uh, a new a new version of Signal coming out yep. soon. Uh, uh, is there uh, is there any? I asked Chris this. Is there any one particular like plugin that you find that you're going to all the time that um, you absolutely love that you think like people can't live without? Oh, yeah. Like with for me. Like uh, HDRI Link, as soon as I bought that, that has become a staple in my workflow. Like uh, with our, I bring in our plugin, our Quick Sky, and I immediately throw the GSG HDR oh, no. Link in it because it works perfect. It works oh, seamlessly it with really? it. Yeah, oh, that's like great. it's great. So like I just throw in, I do a custom HDR, throw in my my oh, file nice. thing right in, and it works. Oh, and it's like great. okay, great. It's Dude. awesome. It's even working. It's plugin for a plugin for a plugin. You know, it's, it's like, like that's great. It's like third third. Uh, dimension. Yeah, I know. But is there any one in particular that you're like, I can't live without this one. This is my go-to. I think the one I use, I'm, I'm with you. HDRI link all the way. Like, and, and I've kind of become dependent on it to the point where it's like kind of sad, but um, <laughs> I, I think that and then a close second would probably be Signal. I think I use Signal quite a bit. And then, um, I don't know, then Transform, um, what else am I using a lot of? I feel like I'm forgetting one. Yeah, I think I think HDRI Link and HDRI Studio. Mm -hmm. uh, those are like my major ones. But we're focused. Like we've got so many new things that we're working on. Oh, and the LUTs, the girly grade LUTs I yeah, use yeah. on all my renders. Yeah. Which if you guys should definitely check those out. Yeah, I will. Kind of sweeten up your stuff. Um, yeah, we've got uh, you know the new Signal updates coming out. We've got a new HDRI pack that I'm stoked about. That's going to be ready for Link and HDRI Studio Rig. And then we also have, um, we're updating some stuff. We've got, we've got a new thing uh, that I think I can talk about. We're gonna be releasing a set of grunge maps. Cool. So specifically to create wear and tear. On That's things. awesome. That's and, awesome. Yeah, what's great about those is that they're, we're not like, we're not telling you how to use them. They're just gonna be JPEGs that you yeah. can bring them into Maya, Maya, Max, Cinema, Octane, Arnold, we don't care. They're, but they're awesome ways to like add that like really subtle layer of grime. Mm -hmm. There's like fingerprints, there's scratches. Cool. They're gonna be great. They, cool. And I've been using them. They've been kind of part of my everyday carry library for a while. Cool. So we're gonna put those out. 
And then I feel like I'm forgetting something, but uh, yeah, we have a ton of stuff coming yeah. out. Yeah, it's going to be a great 2017, dude. A lot of stuff. Cool. A lot of stuff. Awesome. Grayscalegorilla.com? Yep, always. Right. Always, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Chad. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. Thanks, man.